the Game Boy Advance. Now, I gotta tell you, this is one that almost tried to slip by the cracks on us. This is a great game. You pilot the Millennium Falcon, right? And it goes through the first three movies with the Falcon. Well, the real first movies, you know what I'm saying? But not only do you get to pile the Millennium Falcon, you also get to do some kind of like other vehicles as well. Like like in the first movie, you get to ride on the land speeder through Tatooine, and that's really neat. You get to fly the Falcon through Cloud City from the second movie. Now the one bad thing about the game is that they have the whole password system, right? I mean, you're playing your Game Boy Advance wherever you may be, taking a dump upside down, whatever you're doing, you don't have a pen. Do you have a pen? Do you have a pen handy? No. Amazing game, fun stuff, challenging stuff, high production quality, great graphics, great audio, great story. Of course, I'm giving it a 9.5. with this future theme, but we're going to move into this post-apocalyptic future for a game called Roadkill. It's from Midway. What did you think of Roadkill? I mean, it looks like a first-generation PlayStation 2 game or something. You know what I mean? It ain't, it ain't pretty. This is Grand Theft Auto meets Twisted Metal. Well, well, yeah, it's Grand Theft Auto, but you can never get out of the car. Right, it's Twisted Metal in the Grand Theft Auto world. You're yes. basically driving around in cars that can shoot at each other. And what's so funny about this game is that they ripped off Grand Theft Auto so much, even the menu screens and the pause screens, those look the same. The lead character's voice sounds exactly like Ray Liotta. Right, and you've got all the radio stations. They have all the 70s, you know, rock and roll. The best part for me is when you hit somebody in right. your vehicle, right. you they, can drag them along. They hang on for their dear they, life. Or, they, or you drag them along in their bumper. Now, I thought one of the big problems in the game was the whole kind of map system. Right. Like, you might have something that looks like it's right next to you on the map, but it's all blocked. The way that the game breaks down is there's a bunch of different gangs. You're in this post-plague city this environment you know everything is decrepit and falling apart and all of these gangs are sort of take you know fighting for power and basically you, you work your way up through the gangs beating up different gang members until you fight the boss at the end of everything now i'll tell you what if you just go around and start shooting at other cars they'll actually get angry at you and yes. start shooting back and they're actually really difficult and if too much chaos is happening, it'll go into riot mode. Right. The only way that you can sort of calm everybody down is to run over a floating peace symbol. You can do all kinds of crazy, insane jumps and stunts, just like in Grand Theft Auto. It just didn't have that polish. I don't know if it was the graphics or it, it just, it seemed like maybe some of the things, that they cut corners in well, the graphics I'll tell, area and it I'll just tell you didn't what do my, it for me. I'll tell you what my problem was. I thought that there was fun to be had in this game, but I, I felt like the missions and the, and the structure of the game, it was so repetitive. I mean, basically what you're doing is you're either delivering packages, right. you're chasing a guy to go kill him, you're, uh, or, or you're racing picking up, against the clock, racing which, against the clock, which is you're, impossible. you're picking up different things that are falling off of a truck. It just wasn't the same amount of variety that you would get in a Grand Theft Auto where you can hop out of the car and go into sniper mode. Right. When I play a game and see that it's a complete blatant rip off of something else, it cheapens it for me yeah. and it detracts from the game. It's trying to borrow so much, but it doesn't bring anything really that innovative to the table. Right. right. There, are, there are some stuff. And less, in fact, and because you yes. can't even get out of your car. Yeah, and then the visuals aren't there, and the audio right. and the radio stuff. I mean, it's it's pretty good, but it's it's not as good as Vice City. You know, right. It's not as innovative as what the guys at Grand Theft have been doing. But, you know, I still had some fun. It wasn't a horrible game. Yeah. You know, if you beat Vice City, if you've already played Twisted Metal to death, you want to try something in that vein, you know, I think you should check out Roadkill. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. That's exactly what I gave it as well, 7. On the positive side, they have some really funny elements in this game. I love being able to shoot and drive. The best thing is you get to hit people with your car and drag them all over the city. On the negative side, the graphics in this game are very disappointing. It's very much a blatant ripoff of Grand Theft Auto. And even though there's some fun to be had in this game, the level of innovation is nowhere near what we'd expect. We've got something a little bit different for you guys in hardware today. We're going to talk about a monitor. This is called the BFM V9000. That stands for big 
Honor. That's right. From Elite Interactive, what did you think of this one? What's cool is that when you first take it out, it, it's so slim and tiny. And, sure, and looks it, cool. And it has a little stand. Yes. It's like, you know, wow, this might be something really sweet. Well, there's three video inputs, you right. know, and you have S-Video. Yes. One has the, uh, you know, the, the RCA. Game cable thing, or the RCA. That's and then right. one of them has the game cable one. But I was, I was disappointed to see that there was no component. Right. Or DVI would have been nice. But I think that translates when you actually see the, the, the quality of the image on the screen, which I think is the biggest disappointment about this whole deal. The contrast seems to be a little well, high. And, and it's blurry. It's like everything's sort of a little bit out of focus. It's 350 yeah. bucks. Yeah. If I'm spending 350 bucks, I want to, I'd rather just get a, 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 a regular a, TV, yeah. The other thing I, I, I liked about it was that it actually had speakers that kind of, yep. you know, just plugged onto the back. You didn't even need cables. They just kind of connected. So I went in and I was trying to adjust a lot of the brightness and contrast levels to kind of maybe tweak it out a little bit. Nine, okay, I can barely hear it. Ten, okay, eleven. Bah! It's yeah. like really big. It's I like, know. What, what happened there? I cannot recommend the BFM 9000. Nor I. On the positive side, the design and layout is actually really nice looking. It comes with detachable side speakers and it comes with its own game cable so you can hook up multiple platforms. On the negative side, we wish there were some better kinds of video inputs like Component or DVI, but our biggest complaint about the BFM 9000 is the visual quality of the image. All right, stick around, you guys. We're coming right back with a look at a couple of Gladiator games.